Hello my friends, John LaRue here with another Rule Speed Through, and in this episode I'm going to teach you how to play Rats of Wistar, and I'm going to also teach you how to do the solo mode on it. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay folks, as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you have, I do really appreciate that support. Thank you very much. Alright, so, what do we got going on here? This is what the game looks like when you've finished it, alright? So I will talk about how to play the rules, and then I'll tell you about how to do the solo. Okay, so first of all... When you begin the game, you're going to do the setup as it says. You're going to set up for two players. And then the differences from the solo standpoint in the two player is that the, um, you, you have that different rule book. Follow those steps. But for the most part, it really is the same. You set up your game exactly like you would for a two player, which is handy. Now, um, what you've got going on here is you have um, a very straightforward but broad action selection game. Okay. And you also have this wheel, and the wheel is what you do use to select actions. So, on your turn, what you are going to do, and we will use blue as us here, is you will place one, first of all, in turn order. The bot actually usually goes first. We'll start going first, I should say. You might be able to take that away from him if you go to the alchemist space anytime. But on your turn, you are going to go to one of these spaces here. You're going to put your... Uh, chief token on any of these open spaces. The rules are this. If you go to a space, the other player can go to this space, but you can't go to the same twice, all right? So you can never go to the same action twice in a round. You can get the bonuses first, or you could take the, the main action first, either or, but you have to do, you have to complete either or before you do that. What are the main actions? Well, they are um, driven by the power of how many workers you have in the three areas. So as you can see in this example here, I have one worker in the underground areas, which, have, which has uh, to do with getting metal, building beds. I have one worker in the field area over here, which has to do with um, exploring and doing inventions or grabbing invention cards. And I have three workers in the forest area, which has to do with digging more uh, opening places in your um, your lair, and then also gathering wood. Now, in this case, as it, whoops, as I finished this game, I actually had the open spaces already dug out, but I'll put those there for an example. All right, so you're going to take your main action, you're going to take your bonus action, and then that will be your turn. Now, what are the actions and how they work? Uh, well, first of all, let's just talk about the two gather actions, okay? So you can gather um, wood over here, by taking this action, and then you get a number of wood equal to the number of workers you have in that area. If you want to get metal, you can take this action, you can get a number of metal equal to the workers you have in that area. So one metal, and if I went up there, three wood. If I want to dig, all right, and open up more rooms, the base cost of that is two metal per room, but you can unlock that later, I'll tell you how, uh, to spend one metal per room, and you literally just remove these and open up the spots, and you can dig a certain amount of rooms out per worker that you have or resources that you have. Same thing with building beds. So if I want to build a bed, I have to spend two wood, or if I unlock that later through completing missions, it could be one wood per bed. And I would take one of these beds and I would unlock the worker, and then I would place it in one of my open rooms. If you don't have an open room, you cannot actually build um, or, or um, make a bedroom. That's impossible. When you have a worker over here, you can play it as a free action, anytime in action, um, and anytime in the game, and I'll talk about those in a second once I complete telling you about these other actions. This action allows you to explore the house. And to explore the house, you look at the amount of workers you have here to tell you how many explore actions you can take. The explore actions are as follows. You can use it to open a door. So this actually shouldn't even be here because he went through it, but... If there is a door in between your, let's say right here, and you want to get to this room, you can spend an action uh, or explore action to take this tile, get the bonus and open the door and you keep it over right outside. You can spend an action to move from one room to another. You can spend an action to flip over a card if it isn't revealed yet. You have to be in the room or your tent has to be there. When you flip it over, you will get whatever bonus is printed right here, and then you'll leave it flipped over so that we can accomplish missions later on. And then the final action, and these are all written right here, is you can take one of these room tiles 
if it's available. These are the basement tiles. There's also room tiles up here if they're available. And you would take them and you have to have a spot that's dug to put it into your room. And when you do that, you would get any instant bonus or any for uh, the rest of the game bonus that might be printed on there. Whenever you want to flip over a card or take a room bonus, your tent or your token, your explorer must be in that room, okay? And finally, the last action we'll talk about is gaining invention cards here. You simply draw, um, you could take a card at the top of the deck from either stack, or you um, can take one from the opening offer over there, okay? And when you take a card, you simply put it into your hand. Now your hand will have uh, any number of cards. There is no limit to the cards that you uh, can take. And you basically can play those through any time you see this symbol right here where there is a card with an arrow. So most of the time that's a bonus action, but it also could be the alchemist action, which I'll just talk about in a second. And the, um, let's see, I wanna make sure that when you take the action, yeah, taking a basic action costs one, taking an advantage action costs two points. So if you wanna take an advanced card, it does take two worker strength over here to take that action card, okay? Because you see this costs one, that costs two. The action cards do a variety of different things. And so let me talk about that right now. They do, so there are some that are just instant benefits. For instance, to play an action card, you have to spend these resources over here. Sometimes they have uh, requirements on them like this. Not only would you have to spend the two wood, but you'd also have to have previously had this mm -hmm. token someplace in your area, or you'd have to spend a wild token to do that. You can get a wild resource token by using an anytime action, by spending three of anything. That could be three cards from your hand or three uh, metal or three wood or any combination of those. You play the card, you would then do whatever it says. So some of these lightning bolts, those are instant effects. This would give you two more um, light bulb actions to draw two cards or one card, depending. And it also give you your electricity token over here, which is a requirement for some of the other tokens that are out there. If you already had it, you can flip it over and it will get you two points. Now, the other cards, there are end game scoring. For instance, this gives you two points at the end of the game for every battery that you have. So these are, this counts as two batteries, but I have another battery right here too. Then there's all, you know, forever effects. This one is anytime you would play a brain token, you would then get a free explore action, one action strength, etc. So there's lots of different cards in this game. You have to explore those on your own. And that's what those do, and that's what the cards do, okay? Let's talk about some of the other bonus actions here. So, and actually, what I might do is remove these. So, this bonus action will let you complete a mission or move two of your workers anywhere you want on the board, okay? Completing a mission, you would look at this card right here, and you would decide, do I meet the requirements of any of these spots? And if yes, I could put one of my cubes down and gain these rewards right here. And of course, you, in order to complete a mission, you have to have your explorer in the location of the mission or have a tent previously placed in that location. When you complete a, uh, an action for a mission, you're going to take one of these cubes off of here and you're going to unlock a reward. Now notice, these are brown, which means these cubes can be... Uh, unlocked by completing missions upstairs. These cubes are in um, stone areas. These can only be unlocked by completing missions in the basement, okay? So when you complete a mission, not only do you get the reward there, but you're gonna get some reward over here, depending on what it is, and they come with some points, and sometimes you have to pay extra for them. For these, for instance, this area right here and this area right here, you have to pay one additional cost, either a resource or a card. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, the other thing you have is bonus actions or these anytime actions, I should say, not bonus actions, those are on the wheel, anytime actions. So anytime you can do three of anything for a wild token, four of anything for that electricity, you can spend one of your move tokens to move a worker, which is usually really good, right? When you wanna take something, you wanna kind of move a worker to make it stronger. You can accomplish one of these bonuses, which I'll tell you about in a second, or I shouldn't say bonuses, uh, achievements. You can place one of these workers from here on any spot in those areas. You can, um, I'm sorry, this is, you can use a one time, any action. This is the objective. And then here you can place a tent. Now, the objectives work like this. If you have the condition 
you can claim that. Let's say I had two of these blue tokens played somewhere here. I could claim this and I would get the rewards. You can only do these once. And in the two player game, some of the spaces are already blocked. They also have some one-time cards like I showed you before. Well, I haven't showed you, they haven't come up. Um, but the one-time cards you can activate. And I don't even know if I'll find any real quick here or not, but yeah, here we go. This one X, so I can, I can do this one time on a round and play a black token there. I wouldn't be able to do it again until the next round. There are five rounds in this game. The rounds are counted out by tiles that will be over here, which are these room tiles. And at every round, you flip one over. You flip one over in the start of the game. And if no one takes it, you just discard it. But you can take those by using this action right here, this bonus. The other bonus actions is that would take a wild token right here. This gives you some wood and lets you move. This lets you do an alchemist action, which is either to complete a contract, play a card, get a metal, or get a wood. And if you don't want to play your guy out here on your turn, you can play them in the alchemist action, which would let you do that, plus get a movement token. And that is how you would get into first player order in the subsequent rounds by playing there. Whoever's the first to play there would be first player next time. So I pretty much covered off on everything that I can think of in the game except the reset. After you finish playing all three of your cards, then you will do a reset where you spin this wheel 60 degrees, moving the actions around. You'll retrieve all your workers. You'll discard these cards over here on the right, fill up the, um, the offer. And by the way, every time you buy a card at the end of your turn, you will refill the offer with and slide everything down. Um, you will advance the round by taking one of these room tiles that's still there and flipping it over and putting it over here. If there's one there, you discard it. And then uh, I think that's it. So yeah, you've reset everything. You've got your guys back and you remove any of the 1X tokens that you've played over there on your 1X cards. Now, let's talk about how the solo bot works. So the solo bot is going to have a couple things. First of all, they're going to have a deck of cards here for their exploration, which I'll talk about in a second. Second of all, they have action cards. So every round, they're always going to take all seven action cards back, and they're going to shuffle them up, and they're going to flip one over to tell what they're going to do. They're going to put their worker, or their chief, in the farthest outside space they can that matches this token right here and take the main action that associates with it. If they haven't played at least three uh, mice tokens, workers, into that area, wherever this is, they will play one now. After they complete their action, then they will take the bonus actions printed here and only here. They never take bonus actions anywhere else. They never resolve things anywhere else. They don't care what's printed on cards, printed on tiles, printed on uh, rooms, except for the points at the end. It's only the bonus actions that go through here. They do get the achievements over here when they score them. Um, as far as I know they do. I could be wrong about that. Check it out. Just make sure. I played it like they do. Um, and, uh, and then um, the other thing is, is they have these three cards that you will configure for their solo game. And the cards are marked 0, 1, 2, and 3. So you can have, with a cup, the accompanying cards, you can basically play a 0 to 9 difficulty bot. You are going to put on these cards these tokens like you see here. And those tokens, anytime a card bonus says move down one of the other tracks, you'll move this down and take whatever action you find there. Check the rule book for it. The nice thing about the solo bot is that all their actions are detailed right on their player, on their player board right here. So anytime they would take, um, take this action or this action, they get one point per worker they have there. Anytime they would go to build, they would either build uh, or build a bed, they build one bed, or if they had three workers, two beds, here they'd dig one room or two worker, two rooms if they have three workers, take two cards, take four cards, take one explore action, take two explore actions, and then over here they would do what says here. Now, let's talk about these explore actions real quick. When they take an explore action, they take the top card, they flip it over, they look at whatever room they're in. So let's say they were in room, what is that? That's room D. So D, they would try first to get um, a room token if they could, and if they can't, then they would flip over one of the uh, cards if they aren't revealed. They would then play a tent and they would room to move to room E. You use this card to determine where they are, where they're going, what the rooms are, and what the priority is. 
So if they had to flip over both cards, or one card, and there's two that are unflipped, whichever is the lowest number is the card they're going to use. And that includes where the tent is, too. So if they're in there uh, in one room and there's a tent in another, whichever room has the priority, the lowest number is the card they flip. They don't get any bonuses. They don't get any points. They don't get any rewards for doing any of the flipping or anything of that nature. And so the solo bot is completely controlled by these hand of cards, and it's really easy to manage, thank goodness. And that's pretty much it um, for the most part. If I missed anything, please let me know in the rules. Again, there's or in, in the comments, and I'll explain it more. Uh, there's five rounds of the game. At the end of the fifth round, you sum up all your score. You'll sum up the highest revealed bedroom tile that you have. You'll sum up the highest revealed um, room that you've dug. You'll sum up any points you have here, any points that come out here, any end game points over here. You'll get, um, let's see, I don't think there's any there's anything out there that you get. You've already gotten your objective points from there. You do get some leftover resource points if you have them. Uh, and it's pretty actually pretty straightforward to score at the end. And the bot scores very similarly to you in almost every case, except they have some end game scoring based on their scores, their, their three cards. So thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it, everybody. And whatever you do in the future, I really hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.